has this really interesting, uh, really interesting alchemy going on of, of both a strong uh, emphasis on justice, a strong emphasis on God's fairness for all, but also one that is done with joy and gratitude. In many ways it's about what I call building beloved community. And it has always seemed to me that Union Church is a place that is about building beloved community. Boundless love, hospitality, kindness, peace, justice, all of the things that we want for our world, this church stands for. Paul says instead, do what you do. Do what you do for you. Since coming here, I realized that there is a community that will love you, whether you believe one thing or another, it's that we're worshiping together as a community, that we're giving of ourselves, whether it be as Sunday school teachers, or as musicians sharing our talents, or tithing what you can, or tithing in other ways, you know, in non-monetary ways. I give of my time, money, and uh, my spirit, part of the community. I enjoy being part of a faith community. I give in ways that I can as a student, which is through my creativity. I sing in the choir. Tom helps with the Sunday school class. We kind of look at it as a give back, because we have received so much. Union Church uh, works in many areas. We work locally, we work state and nationally, and we work internationally. So some of the folks that we give to are developing communities in El Salvador. We give to Bread for the World. We also give locally. We work with things like our Women's Creative Sewing and Crafts program. Union Church folks and probably people in general are very, very concerned about what goes on in the world and have many things that they could give their money to. You shouldn't give money to anything that doesn't really matter to you. I think you should support Union Church if you care about a, a future where there might be more peace and more justice. If you want to see that world built, uh, supporting Union Church is a great way to start. And Union Church then can support the next generation and the next generation and the next generation of leaders who will, I hope, bring us closer to that goal. We wanna make sure that the doors are open uh, and all people feel welcome, and anybody is welcome here. And a member is someone who decides, I'm gonna be the one to help make sure those doors are open. It's easy to stay within budget. All we have to do is not do the things that make us a great church. We could cut children's programming, and we could cut music out. We could stop all of that. We spend a lot of money on those things, but we do that because they matter. They really matter. If we stop that just to balance a budget, we're not being the church God calls us to be. Membership means commitment. Everyone has a part to play. Planning means thinking ahead. Make a pledge. 
be our future. Support the church. And the social justice issues that matter to all of us. We're serving and loving together. We're serving and loving together. We are serving and loving together. We're serving and loving together. Union Church is serving and loving together. Will you join us?
Good morning, all. Good morning. I hope you can find a good spot to sit. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome in. Welcome in. As you can see, uh, we're flying solo today. Reverend Rachel is still on her week of continuing education in uh, the terrible, terrible location of carefree Arizona, where sadly she's enduring horrible temperatures in the 70s. It's got to be awful for her. Please hold her in your prayers. Bless her heart. Rachel, if you're watching, we're thinking of you. Ooh. Yes. We just hope she's going to bring back some of that warm weather with her. So we're very glad that she's there and very glad that you are all here. And I'm also very glad for all of you who are watching on the web, whether you be with Reverend Rachel or further afield. It's always a delight to have you with us, and we're so glad that you're here. This, uh, this last week, at the end of the year, we received a lot of generous, loving contributions from some of you who are watching on the web. And thank you so much from as far away as Walla Walla, Washington, from Arizona, and Florence, Kentucky. We received wonderful donations, and so thank you for that work and for making it possible for us to do what we can here in Berea. We hope that you are doing what you can do wherever you find yourself. We have uh, several announcements and special uh, celebrations today. First of all, uh, you'll notice that today is the celebration of the Epiphany and also in a special combo package, the Baptism of Jesus. This is an ancient tradition in the, uh, in the life of the church, dating back at least to the 4th century, where we know that we celebrated the old Christmas, that is to say, the time when the kings arrived, bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh on the 12th day. We, that would be January 6th. But we also know that the early church celebrated the epiphany of Jesus' spirit appearing at his baptism. So today we perhaps return to the future, as we return to an early tradition of celebrating both together. So at the end of service today, uh, prepare to be a little wet, because today as we remember Jesus' baptism, we will participate in that tradition of called Aspergis, which is the reminder of our baptismal vows as we enter the new year. And so I'll take a, a, a branch of the Christmas tree, which I have right here, and I will uh, walk through the congregation and just give a gentle sprinkling of God's grace and reminder to all of you. So if that is a... Uh, it's warm water, yes, warm water, certainly. <laughs> the ice cubes have melted by now, so yes, so, <laughs> indeed. Also today, you'll see that the table is set for communion, our very first of the new year. So happy new year to all of you, and what a gracious, great gift it is that you are with us. Everyone is welcome to partake in the communion and to celebrate in the old tradition of the Three Kings Day. Uh, the bread has been made by Barb Smith, is her sweet almond bread. It's a wonderful, sweet bread. Now, if you are uh, gluten-sensitive and gluten-free, uh, in the bowls that will be served alongside, the bowls have gluten-free bread, and we invite you to take from there, both here and in the choir, if that is your preference. After church, we have a special uh, panettone loaf, which we will serve in the, uh, in the parlor for refreshments, and we hope that you can join us. We also have some special musicians with us here. Uh, Mallory Lakes is here from her uh, studies from EKU, fresh from her musical studies there, and she will be leading the special music this morning, so we're really glad about that. So thanks for that, Mallory. If you are new to us, we're very glad that you're visiting, and we hope that you found what you need. There are large print bulletins, there are a hearing assistance devices, there's a bathroom in the vestibule, and hope that any of all of those you might need, you would make use of. You'll also find everyone a red pew folder that is in the, uh, in the folder there. If you wouldn't mind to take that and fill it out, pass it down, that would be great. While you're doing that, I'll just share with you a few things. Hey, uh, Christmas Eve was a wonderful celebration, and we were able to raise $2,250 for Burr and uh, Bereans for Faith Community Outreach, uh, Bereans United for Utility Relief, and the Berea Food Bank that night. All of our offerings from both services went to that wonderful giving, and thank you so much for that generosity. Uh, in light of that generosity, uh, you will remember in early November, we had a visit from Samuel Mugabe from Uganda, who's working with a group called Samuel's Kids, an orphanage that we are helping, that Deborah Payne was involved in helping getting some water treatment. At that time, they were working on building a new facility. It was 90% complete. 
and they were renting in town a place. Well, uh, something has developed, and that is that they, uh, the landlord has foreclosed on their lease, and they need to rapidly advance moving the orphanage out of town to their new digs. They can do that, but they are $1,920 short. So I have already received a small contribution, a great, a generous contribution towards that. If you would like to make a second offering, ten dollars, twenty dollars, a hundred dollars, uh, and make it to Samuel's kids. Make the check to Union Church, but if you simply put Samuel's kids on your offering line, we will be able to uh, close that gap for them. I hope we could do that. They need to be out by the end of this week. So uh, that will, they ran into uh, one of those situations where uh, the legalities, it was better to simply get out and, break, and pay the lease than it would have been to hire a lawyer to take claim their rights. It's uh, one of the sad features of working with the marginalized, but I think we might be able to help. So if you're able and feeling that, I hope you'll join me. I'm going to drop some in mine in my offering as well. We have a good number of folks in our prayers. Uh, first of all, we are remembering that lots of folks have just come through a very hard season having missed loved ones and lost folks, and so we're thinking of all of you who are, are holding the absence of friends and family in your hearts. Uh, we also know that illness has struck uh, deep and hard. I think half of our choir was already sick, so it's good that Mallory is playing today and not ill. It's also good that you all are here, but I hope that you are taking care of yourself and making sure to get uh, uh, looking in on neighbors and friends. In that regard, I can give you some, uh, give you some news. Loyal Jones is in out of the hospital and into Cardinal Hill Rehab. He had a bunch of visitors this week. He turned 90 years old this week, and we, uh, we celebrated him wildly. Some of his friends did it on Thursday with him. I was there on Friday with balloons and bourbon balls, uh, which we did not light, I want to be clear. So we're very grateful about that. Uh, the other good news to share is that another one among us is having a significant birthday. Bob Schaefer has turned double eights today, this very day. And he is celebrated by publishing a brand new book. So uh, I, I don't know if you've got copies on you, but I think he'll probably bootleg you one out of the back seat of his car. Uh, brand new book of prayers. So Bob, very, very happy birthday to you. And I think, uh, I hope Loyal is watching. I know you are. Let's sing happy birthday to Bob and Loyal. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bob and Loyal. Happy birthday to you. Amen. What blessings. Lights in our midst. Other good news. Jackie Perman is home. Hallelujah. So we're so glad about that. Judy Singleton is home. Uh, we ask prayers for Judy's daughter, Stephanie, who is going through some special treatment. So please hold Stephanie uh, in, your, in your hearts and minds. BJ Godby is at home recovering. She says she's doing better too. So we're thinking about you, BJ. Hope you're doing okay. But we have some folks we are remembering in our, in our thoughts as well with sadness. Uh, Richard Olson went on a family vacation this uh, week, and I very innocently said, well, how was that trip to New Mexico? And he says, it was fine, except that his 94-year-old mother, who had made the trip herself, passed away while they were all together with her there. So uh, services will be in New York a little bit later in the month. Uh, our condolences go out to Richard Olson and all of the family on her death. And then this morning, we received very sad news about new visiting friends from the church. Jack, uh, Jason Tackett uh, is the cousin of uh, Brandy and Adam Dyers. They, uh, they've been coming for the last several months. Uh, Jason was killed early this morning on his way home in a car accident on his way home from his fiance's house. So we have placed this evergreen here to remind us that God's love sees us through even the worst of those times and we are praying for God's light to surround that family. This tragedy is not something that will be easily overcome and it will take a church family. So I hope that you will make the effort to learn how we might help best, not just in this situation, but anywhere where the darkness has seemed to overpower the light. Each week, we, uh, we have a candle that we light to remind us that we live in the light of others who have gone before us. And I wanted to light this candle today in honor of an event that took place January 9th 
1967, so 40, 50 years ago, and that was that the Georgia State Legislature refused to seat the elected representative, state representative, Julian Bond. Julian Bond a, has a uh, connection with Berea College, as you may know, but uh, he was elected and he was refused to be seated. Because he opposed the Vietnam War, the Senate, the, uh, the, the legislature refused to certify him. So they declared his seat vacant. He ran again and he won. And they again refused to seat him. So he ran a third time. And he won, took it to the Supreme Court, and was eventually seated in his rightful place. Here is a light for persistence in the pursuit of justice. We are all about the light today as we remember the, the, uh, the wise who followed the star to find the Christ. Let us pray that we too would have persistence in that journey. I invite you to be at peace in this place as we worship together. to everyone on this crisp, cold, invigorating morning. Yes, <laughs> we have to phrase this all in positive terms because it is a, the beauty of nature. And as we call ourselves to worship, uh, please uh, rise in body or spirit. People of God, arise. For the glory of God is shining on us. Though shadows abound, lift up your eyes and behold the brightness of God's presence. Arise and shine, for our light has come.
Let us pray together. O oh, shining light, we give thanks for the light of this new day and of this new year. We seek the star of eternal love and pray to follow the light of justice and peace as we travel. We long to lay aside the failures and fractures of our past. We confess that we have walked errantly, sought that which we knew would not satisfy, and have misused our gifts in ways that have hurt rather than healed others. We would turn now and follow the light. We pray your help to both forgive and be forgiven, that we may walk forward in joy. Like the wise ones of old, help us seek until we find where Christ is laid in our world, in our ways, and in our hearts. And the people said, Amen. Friends, believe the good news, for the light came into the world and the darkness did not overcome it. We are indeed lifted by light, infused with it, and we follow it yet. So, for all those who seek, may you find the forgiveness that you need in order to be wise in your world and wonderful in your ways. This is the word of the Lord, and the people said, thanks be to God. Amen. Won't you turn to your neighbors right and left and offer them a sign of peace this morning. Peace to those up and peace to those below. Peace to you. abounding. One of the blessings among us is the incredible talent of those who offer their offer their service here, and in just one way that she does it is her music. We welcome Mallory Lakes to help lead our worship.
morning's scripture reading is from Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Well, I hope some will come from the far reaches of the pews as we talk a little bit about this baptismal Sunday and about this epiphany. I'm looking for the brightest and the best, the youngest and the, the oldest. You can come as you are, young and young at heart. Come join me at the front. We'll talk a little bit about prayers for light. So, yeah, it's working. Good. good, 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 good. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for being the few, the proud, the faithful. Glad you're here. So, uh, this is the, yesterday was the 12th day of Christmas. Did you all get presents? You did. All right. Yeah, exactly. That was a really good tradition. You know that presents didn't start to be given on Christmas Day until way, 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 way later, like a thousand years after Jesus. It was uh, always on Epiphany. Why? Does anybody remember? Why do we give presents? Uh, they want to make supper. Yes, that's good. Oh, oh, no. They want to make you suffer for 12 days. Yes. <laughs> yes, possibly. I can't say. The, uh, the ways of parents are passing strange. No, it's because the wise guys brought... Does anybody remember? What did they bring? Frankincense. Gold. Anybody remember the third one? Anybody remember? Myrrh. They brought myrrh. That's exactly right. They brought myrrh. Myrrh was a, a really fancy spice and frankincense too. And gold, of course, all these things were precious. It may have been that the myrrh and the frankincense were worth more than the gold because they were so hard to get. So it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And the giving of presents to honor the king as one of the, the newborn king was one of the things that got started at Christmas. Well, right after that, you remember last week, if you, those of you who were here, remember that we talked about that Jesus grows up, right? He doesn't say a baby the whole time. Jesus grows up. He goes to the temple. All these things happen. And ultimately, as we fast forward 33 years, he's standing at the side of the River Jordan, having grown up, studied, learned what he could, and there he gets baptized, right? His cousin, John, is at the riverside, and he says, anybody who comes, wash away all that has been sin, sinful, wash away everything you wish you hadn't done, come and start fresh, start new. And Jesus does that. And does anybody remember what happens when Jesus comes out of the water? Yeah, a dove, exactly, a dove comes down. And in one story, it, it descends right on him, and in other stories, they see this bright heavens torn open and the dove descending. Right, well, the early, earliest followers of Jesus knew that that was an appearance of God. And so the word epiphany means an appearance. And it could mean the appearance of the wise who come from the far reaches of the desert. It could mean uh, the appearance of the Holy Spirit as it descends on Jesus. And today we're remembering both. I brought with me the thing that we do every year at this time. I brought some water. And what I would like to do with you is I would like you to put some prayers to appear in this water. Would you hold, would you take a cup of water? Don't drink it. Here we go. There you go. Take one of those. Very good. Good. All right. Let's take these some back here. All right. One of the things that we do every year is we take a bunch of water. Here you go. Take one. There you go. Yeah. 
And one of the things we do is we put our prayers into this water that we save all year long. And whenever anybody gets baptized, we hope that the spirit of what we have prayed will flow into them along with all the spirit that God has for them, right? So I wonder if you would join me and if you would just think about, if you just hold this water or put it in front of you just like you have, and maybe put your hand over it like this, right? And let's imagine that all of your thoughts are going to go to your fingers and from your fingers into this water. I want you to imagine something that is very beautiful. Anything beautiful. Could be a picture, could be a, could be a setting, could be a person. Something beautiful. Imagine that beauty coming from your mind, down your arm, and into this water. And then I want you to think, as that drains into that water and imagining it coming live, I want you to think of something that's important. Something, something that like studying or education or justice or fairness or something important that a person might need in their life. And put that in the water too. And now I want you to think of something joyful, something happy, something could be silly, dancing, could be laughing, could be telling jokes, something that brings joy. Imagine that flowing from you down your arm, into your fingers, into this water. Lord, we ask that all the gifts that we hope most for ourselves and for others might be contained in your will for us. Grant that this water be made pure and holy, a gift to those who will receive it. We ask that the prayers of our children be the prayers of our heart. Amen. Okay, so now, pour the water into this baptismal, right? All those prayers. Yeah, and you can keep the... Will somebody collect the cups for me? Thanks. All right, let me come over here and get these. Let's get these prayers. Perfect. All right, and let's get this prayer over here. You want to pour your prayer in? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Pour that one in. That's it. Oh, good. Okay, good. Now, here's what I want to do next, which is this here. This is water from the actual Jordan River that I got last year when I got to visit. So this, we've taken the water that you have blessed and prayed in, and this is the actual water that came from the very spot where Jesus, we think, was baptized, and we're going to pour that into this bowl. There we go. This is the water that later on in the service we're going to spritz everybody with. Now, some of you, are you guys going to children's church today? Yeah? Okay. All right. So are you coming back for communion? Yeah? Are they coming back for communion? They're coming back for communion. Okay. So at the end of communion is when we're going to spritz everybody. So you will know that you will be receiving some of Sylvia's prayers and some, some of Kevin's prayers. We're going to set up your prayers, some of your prayers, all these prayers. And all of you are going to be receiving some of these blessings as well. As we remind ourselves that God's love is for just some people? Just a few people? No. No, everybody. Yeah. God's love is for everybody. God's graces are for everybody. God's joys are for all. So that's what we're going to remember, and thank you for helping us do that. Okay, so what should we pray for before we head off to Children's Church? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Pray for good trash disposal. All right, what else should we pray for? Anything else? There's a lot of people sick. Will you help me pray for people who are not feeling well? Yeah. Not sure. Silent prayer. Very good. Absolutely. No, you get to pray for what you want. Well, will you join us as we pray? And let's hold those folks and all people in our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for the lights of these children and of their hearts and minds. They are so bright in our midst. Bless them, keep them strong, keep them joyful. Grant them all that they need this week to succeed and be strong. Help us follow wisely the ways that will help make their world better. Lord, we ask you to look after everybody who's sick and everybody who's traveling, especially as we remember the kings traveling so far to reach Jesus. And help us all that we might see your light 
wherever it shines. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming up. <laughs>
a gift to be truly joyful. Not the artificial, I have to be because I'm supposed to be joyful, but rather a, way, a chance to rise to the lightness offered by a true grace. In the imagery of baptism, those who are immersed often talk about the power of closing their eyes and being immersed in the water and then rising with the light returning as they open their eyes wet and dripping, back able to breathe again. That was not lost either on Christians all the way through the centuries. The idea of baptism was, was always seen as a, a small death, a, a way in which one died to the world but rose to the light of a new life. And like the followers of Jesus, we who have entertained baptism in our traditions have seen that somehow we, by participating in the life and death of Jesus, we also participate, as Paul writes, in the resurrection, that there is an aspiration to something greater than just being sopping wet on the side of a riverbank, but rather being dripping joyful in the midst of a hurting world. We rise in our faith precisely in the darkest moments. Christianity has never thrived or been well, has never done well, has never acted wisely when we have become self-satisfied or when we have failed to look for those who are still in the shadows. All of our traditions suggest to us that when one is in shadow, all are in darkened. And so Epiphany, with its emphasis on baptismal challenge and heavenly light, is a good one for us. It's, it's a good reminder as we head fresh into a new year, just what might be required of us. Those who got baptized studied, worked, prayed, fasted, because they knew that they would be tempted and tried, not by a peevish God seeking to somehow manipulate others into a stronger faith. Rather, they would be tried by the effort of being joyful in a world hell-bent on darkness. There is a lot to bear in this life. There are sudden tragedies of which none of us can predict. There are sorrows that grind the soul like bone on bone. It takes a certain kind of practiced hope, a certain kind of discipline to seek light, to be light, to offer light in the midst of that. Jesus' followers practiced that by joy. They did not give up on joy. They did not sacrifice joy to the seeming importance of deep and weighty matters. They found ways to cultivate it, to carry it like a coal between fires, something they could blow on and ignite again and bring out when it was coldest and most needed. And so festivals in the middle of the coldest time of the year in Egypt, which probably meant it was 60 degrees. <laughs> festivals in the coldest time of our year. Festivals that focused on light and love. It would be a lot easier to do these things sometime else, perhaps. But fair or foul, good weather or bad weather, hot weather or cold, finding a way to rise to the light is our only job. It happens in lots of ways. We rise to the light of education. We rise to the ways in which our minds are literally enlightened. We rise to finding geniuses in our midst, cultivating them, cherishing them, celebrating the accomplishments of all, and giving each and every child this chance to flourish, to grow. That is rising to the light. We rise to the light whenever we find a way to use a gift that is deep inside us and connect it to a need in the world. Listening or teaching or healing 
All of these things are gifts of the Spirit, and suppressed, kept under a bushel, they are nothing. But connected, connected to work that matters, harnessed in that way, not only do we rise, we lift those around us. This year, when we think about entering in, remember those of you who have been baptized and think about those of you who have not. What it is those promises mean to resist the powers of evil, to seek hospitality for all, to live out with risk and passion, something that is bigger than yourself for the betterment of others and not just you. The promise, the promise to be generous in spirit. The promise, the promise to give glory and joy and grace and peace. No matter how sick or sad or sorrowful or broken down you might feel. There's every fairy story you ever had tells the story somehow of the wayward soul who has half a sandwich and the old beggar woman or man comes along and says, may I have something to eat? And the mean one says no. And the nice one says, I only have half a sandwich, but you can have half. And they break the sandwich open and poof, it turns out that that is the fairy godmother or the fairy godfather. And that person is very glad or the king and rewards them wonderfully. And that turns out to unlock everything that that person needed in their life. I would like that to be true. <laughs> and I would like us to live as if it were. That as if your half sandwich were enough generosity to break open the hearts of kings. The kings of this day don't travel much except by airplane. The kings and queens and powers of this world are hardly ever bringing gifts to the poorest and the marginalized. And so, how important it is that we who are wiser than that rise to the light, seek God where God may be found, and offer even the crumbs of the feast of our lives. Today when we eat, today when we remember, today when you leave, let there be light. Amen. As ever, our offering today goes to support both the work of, that happens inside this building, but hundreds and hundreds of places where it is outside. Today, I, I hope you'll join me in making a special over and above offering to Samuel's kids so that we can get those kids out of that orphanage and into their own place. We hope to make a difference today in Uganda, but we hope to make a difference wherever it is that you find yourself. So let us give and give with joy. This is the day that God has made.
you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give their hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Please be seated. My friends, this day we gather here at the joyful table. Hopefully you too are bringing the joy of your hearts as well. Today all are welcome at this meal. You do not need to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of any church to be welcome and to receive the gifts of this table. So we hope that whatever your tradition may be, that you will hold in the light of God peace and hope for all people, particularly as we come to this new year. Today, special instructions on the bread. You'll find both bread that is on the plates, that is a sweet bread, in honor of the sweetness of the finding of the baby Jesus, and also gluten-free bread in honor of not getting sick. <laughs> <clears throat> but as we gather together, let's first prepare ourselves with prayer. We'll invite our lay leader to step to the peace bell and ring our peace bell as we have a moment of silence. As we pray, we lift our prayers for those who have come today as strangers and guests to this congregation. We pray that God's people may sustain them, that God's words may inspire us together, and that the love of Jesus be shown to all. Remembering our world and all local churches as part of our ecumenical prayer cycle, we lift in our prayers the peoples of Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, and occupied Palestine, and the friends and members of Cap Calvary Apostolic Church who are our sisters and brothers, that the hand of God will always cradle and guide us, and the works of God will be our yeast and our pearl. Lord, we carry in our hearts the joy and concern of so many in our midst, some we have named, others whom only you know. Hold and heal us, named and known to you, in body, mind, and spirit, that we may be made one in communion with you. Gracious God, who quickens the faith that brought Magi from the East, who, who kindles the hope that brought captives from exile, and who inspires the love that brings strangers together. We thank you for the light that guided those searching for the truth. We thank you for sending prophets and teachers, angels and magi to lead us into the way of salvation. We praise you for the light that shines through time and history, for leading us year to changing year by the bright morning star, Jesus Christ. We sing praises as we begin this new year of your call and promise. For sharing. We remember the bread of journeys and the wine of new discoveries. Later in his life, on the precipice of new beginnings and dangerous dealings, we remember that Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to those gathered and said, This is my body, which, which is, is broken, broken for you. you. 
do this in remembrance of me. Not just the daily bread, but also the cup of celebration is passed to us. New life, flowing like joy and looking like company, amongst those same friends he took a cup and giving thanks said, this cup is a new covenant of my life and blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord until he comes. Gracious God, by this meal we recall Jesus' birth, his ministry to all on the margins, and his promise of eternal light and light. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the life of Christ our Lord. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Today we're going to invite all of you to, take, to make your own journey and to come forward as the kings did with uh, a journey of your own to this center. We'll invite you to step from your pews and to travel to, uh, to your left, coming up the aisle where you'll meet servers. And then if you will return back to your pew by another road, you will uh, return back by the right and we'll circulate through. If for whatever reason it is not comfortable to come forward and you would like to receive, just signal those who are serving in each of your sections or in the balcony and we can bring the elements elements to you. And if it is not your tradition to receive, that's fine as well. We invite you to just be at peace and at prayer, and, but perhaps make a, a little space for those who are to, uh, to uh, come out uh, of the pew if they, are, if they are blocked. This is the feast of God for the people of God. All things, all things are for all people. Will the servers please come forward?
the blood of Christ for you. In your service, we arise and shine, O Lord of light and truth. We thank you for this meal together. In all that we seek, in all that we share, may the star of your Christ be our guide. As we renew our vows and follow the light of your life, cleanse and heal us, and set our feet on new paths to justice and joy. God blesses us, we, we respond, respond with our lives. Receive this water, gift of God, and hear for yourself how God names you, beloved. By the waters of baptismal grace, we, we promise, promise to love and serve God by following the Christ. We pray to boldly and creatively embody the life and ministry of Jesus as we commit ourselves to work and fellowship that makes the radical and inclusive love of God, the beloved community proclaimed by Jesus, and the continuing inspiration of the Holy Spirit visible and real to all. My friends, I invite you to rest on your feet as we sing. Many are the light beams, and I will pass among you with the prayers of our children and the waters of the Jordan to remind us that we are all, 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 all graced by God. day renewed and refreshed when you find somehow in this world where you are constantly told you are less that in fact you are more may God's light rise within you and may you rise to God's light now and always and may peace go before you peace be your work and may peace be our home in Christ's name we pray amen
You are welcome to join us for more of this wonderful feasting in the uh, parlor right behind the uh, doors here. Also, uh, I forgot to mention that today is the day we are helping restore Christmas to its boxes where it lives for the another nine months. So if you are able to stay around and help, you would be very welcome to do that with the worship board. And also, if you have poinsettias up here in the front, today is the day we would love for you to take them home if you'd like to. Thank you for being part of this, and please join us for parlor coffee and tea.